everyone welcome back to my channel this is what is Wednesday for those of you that are brand new to my channel welcome what is Wednesday is a series started on my channel where anybody and everybody can comment complain and your concerns out there um, I basically do what is where is why is and I am now going to be doing how is or how. Uh, so basically you can come to my channel, comment anywhere you want. I have the links to my social medias are down in the description box down below of every video. So without further ado, let's get into some of you guys' complaints. The blues and gold this is the final um what is wednesday vlogoween style video for this year um also by that intro that you just heard this is what is wednesday we are on episode 32 so i had people uh, questioning why i was reading part of my intro um because originally i was going to have a video for the vlogging intro um, for what is Wednesday and I never filmed it so yeah so that you are wondering how does this version work also is it different so same as always this version is still the same format as normal only more spooky or silly th than normal so I will read any Halloween related one first and the rest um, after uh, so let's see what we got. So the first one is from Instagram. Um, a friend from Instagram. And she says, What is one thing on Halloween uh, that you have to do every year that if you don't do, you feel like Halloween was ruined? So for me, it was every year on Halloween, I woke up at 4 a.m. and have to watch Hocus Pocus than Nightmare Before Christmas. Otherwise, my whole holiday is screwed and it has literally been a sign of how my day was going to go. LOL, but for real. I think for me, um, something that I feel like I have to do that if I don't do it, just Halloween is not the same, is probably just simply dress up. Um, I don't exactly... Well, I used to say they don't exactly have to do anything, but I kind of more like to do something. Something is better than nothing. But like I said, I do dress up. If I don't dress up, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's not good. Okay, this next one is also from a friend on Instagram, but he says, what is one Halloween fable, myth, or story you were told as a kid that you don't believe anymore or you still believe them all. When I was seven, my great-great-grandmother told me that a black cat walking in front of you on Halloween is bad luck. But only when Halloween is on a Friday. I believed that till I was 13 and found out it was not a, it was nothing but a fear to have. Um, so honestly for me, um, and this is going to sound completely weird, I had gone with, um, at the time, my bestest best friend in the whole wide world was um, my neighbor one house over, um, and I went to her fellowship for the very first time, um, and it was kind of close to Halloween when we went. Um, when the pastor had come in um, and was doing like a small little service, like ser a sermon if you will, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, he told us that um, Halloween is nothing to fear. It is not um, against God to celebrate Halloween um, because Halloween is simply um, a time when ghosts and spirits are free um, and sometimes a demon or two can escape um, and therefore will try and take, uh, like, turn a person evil or, you know, whatever you want to call it, a possession, whatever you want to call it. But he said, so when you dress up on Halloween, you are basically telling that demon um, that you are one of them and therefore they will leave you alone. 
Um, and after I heard that, I always thought it was so cool. Um, and that is actually kind of when my turning point from being um, cute, fun little um, costumes like princesses into like, I wanted to be a vampire, I wanted to be um, a witch, I wanted to be a, I tried the devil and I just didn't like how it felt being a devil, I talked about that before, but yeah, so I did, um, I did try and just dress like more scary because I believe that fable so much. Um, no, it is not the devil's birthday. Um, I hate when people say that, that they say Halloween is the devil's birthday. The devil actually never had a birthday because he was never born. He was created. Um, that's like saying Adam and Eve have a birthday, which they don't, um, because they weren't born. So you can't have a birthday unless you were born. They were created, um, and nowhere does it say um, when the devil was created, because technically the devil is a fallen angel. He is a son of God, um, and he chose um, to try and take over, um, so he is a fallen angel. So in all reality, the devil is still an angel, um, and he still was not born. He never came out of a woman and never was living like that. He was created um, because God created all of his children. So that is why Halloween cannot be the devil's birthday. <laughs> Long explanation, but whatever. Uh, so the next one comes from a friend on Facebook, and she says, when you decorate for Halloween, do you wait till October or start in September? When I was a kid, my mom hated to decorate early for any holiday. We would have to wait till October every year to decorate, and usually it took us a couple weeks to put it all up, and by the time Halloween came, we only had the decorations up for one week. And literally the next day, we took it down and put up Turkey Day, only to take it two weeks to put it up. And same happens for Christmas. So yeah. Um, honestly, for me, when I started decorating my room and getting my own decorations, um, I loved to start decorating, like, when Disney would. So, usually Disney would start mid-August, beginning of September. Um, but as I started getting older, um, and really starting to really, really love Halloween, I almost couldn't wait that long. Like, I felt like, okay, August is waiting long enough. One year, I did actually um, decide that I'm not waiting that long either, and I did it like the weekend after 4th of July, so <laughs> um, for me, it all just depends. Currently, my room, I just haven't changed holidays, so it's kind of been Halloween. This is the third year that it's still Halloween. I just haven't felt like changing, even though I have Christmas decorations, they're just in my closet, and I just haven't had the motivation to go in my closet and um, change it. <laughs> uh, comes from a friend on Instagram, and she says, when is the best time to get a pumpkin in your opinion? Um, do you get it from a pumpkin patch or a store? Do you carve it or do you paint it? Um, and when do you carve it or paint it? So for me, I always have, since I was a kid, gotten my pumpkin like two weeks before Halloween. I also, as a kid, always got mine from a pumpkin patch, but as an adult, I get mine from the store. When I was a kid, we would always carve out pumpkins, um, carve out pumpkins, um, and usually did it a week before Halloween. Um, but as an adult, we now only paint ours. We're a very lazy bunch, but I think when my daughter is old enough, I'll do all the traditions of my childhood for my daughter. But she is only 10 months old, so I think I will wait till she is like 3 or 4. Um, so for me, um, this year is actually the first year I'm going to a pumpkin patch. I'm actually going today after I film this. I'm going to be going to a pumpkin patch um, to actually go pick out my pumpkin this year. Most years, um, we would just buy one from the store. We usually bought one, like, maybe a couple days before Halloween, and then usually carved it, like, two to three days before Halloween, um, so that, you know, it stayed for Halloween, like, 
whole and, you know, didn't look sagged and nothing. Um, so this last one comes from a friend on Twitter, and he says, Sorry it's not a Halloween one. Was going to wait till November, but could be Halloween what is. And since this is a subject that just happened here, it is. Cringe alert for those who have PTSD in cars. What is the worst car accident you have been in? Mine was three weeks ago, and I have been in 12 car accidents since I was a kid. Most I was not driving in. Myself only had three, including this one, being the driver. Uh, and this one was the worst I have ever been in. And I just got out of the hospital. By the time it is Wednesday, which today is, um, I will only have been out of the hospital a couple of days. Uh, I live in, uh, I will only have been out a couple of days, so this accident was not my fault, but it was a bad one. I live in a big city with lots of roads and so many that go one way. I was on a back road that is one way. It's not heavily tra traveled. My girlfriend hates this road. And normally I don't go on it, but this time I did. There is a four-way stop at the end of this nine-mile stretch of road. I was two miles from the end, almost in the clear, when an SUV came flying down the road. He's a 28-year-old driver and a major spinner in our area. He has also drag raced so many times. He's a scary driver all in all. But on this day, I had but one second to react. I thought I heard his car coming. He has no muffler. So his car is so loud you can hear it miles away. And I thought I did. But he came racing down the road and literally started to spin four miles from me. I pulled to the shoulder to get away from him till he passed, but he did not pass. He came right at me going 80 miles an hour. He was on the wrong side of the road and swerved right into me. He shoved me down an embankment that is not very high. It's literally like sliding down a small hill when you're at the bottom. You can still see the top of the street. It's only like a five feet, maybe six foot drop. Um, but along with me falling, he fell down it as well. I was wearing a seatbelt, so I survived. He was not, and somehow he fell out of his cart and was pinned under it and died on impact. Lucky for me, there were cars coming that were behind me and behind his side, so we had like 12 witnesses that all saw what happened. My car was mostly damaged from the impact of him hitting into me at 80 miles, but him falling is what took him out and sad to say also. Um, also, I know who his parents are and girlfriend are. They live on my street. He lived a couple streets over. His girlfriend is expecting a baby in about a month. Kind of sad for her and him. And, yeah, that is actually pretty sad. Um, the street we live on, uh, actually our whole area, is full of um, lots of spinners, cars with no mufflers, um, cars that don't care, um, people who will spin in the middle of a rainy day um, or a foggy night. So I know a lot of these spinners have caught accidents. We've actually had two deaths on our street. Um, one happened to a kid who was 14 years old um, crossing the street to go home. Um, so that was pretty sad. He's now, he now would have been 16 years old. And, um, last year, another kid was killed, um, just at the cross street. Um, so this kid was killed maybe like six, five or six houses from the cross street. And the second kid that died last year, um, he was killed actually at the corner of that same cross, <laughs> the same street that this poor other boy died on. Um, my worst accident actually happened um, only a couple months after we moved into this house, actually. Um, my sister had had to stay because me and my mom, we went to Disneyland. Me and my mom, we had gone out and we went to Disneyland. Um, on the drive back, my mom needed to take a nap, so we got off the road. Um, we usually took the 91. Um, we don't take the 91 anymore. Not just because of our accident, but just because we realized, like, it's such a scary stretch of road to be on anyways. Um, we were coming home, and 
um, pulled over um, in a normal pullover spot that we usually go and take a nap at. And we actually both wound up falling asleep. It was only supposed to be 15 minutes. Um, it wound up being almost two hours, I guess, we fell asleep, or an hour and a half, something like that. I don't even remember. It was just 2 o'clock. My sister actually called going, where are you guys? It was like, oh, we took a nap. But, I mean, at 2 in the morning, I guess you can be a little scared that nobody's home and you haven't heard anything. So, whatever. Anyways, um, so we wound up waking up and got back on the road. Um, we were probably, I think, 30, 40 minutes away from our home. My mom always took the carpool, and we were in the carpool lane. Um, we got to about, now only if you live out here are you going to know some of these areas. Um, we were passing the um, on-ramp and off-ramp of Lincoln um, on the 91 freeway, and under the bridge there was a I, I don't know what type of car it is. I just know it's a cube. I don't know the actual make. I just know the model is a cube. Um, a silver cube. Um, and it was stalled or dead um, under the bridge. No blinkers, no flashes on. A silver car and in the dark. The um, over, whatever you want to call those, those roads that go over top of the freeway, um, overpass, underpass, whatever you want to call them, it was, it's, on the 91, they're kind of really low, and they're not lit up, so, there's, like, not a lot of light when you're under there, and I thought I had saw something maybe two minutes before we got on it. I thought I had, but I was not sure. She, unfortunately, didn't see it at all, saw it at the last second when her lights lit up the back side of the cube, um, and she swerved. She still, unfortunately, did make contact on her side of the car, swerved, and being two in the morning, there was not a lot of cars on the street, so swerved, and now this stretch of road um, is actually one that was getting construction done, but it had not really had construction. It just had the K-rails um, along the section, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, um, we beelined across the road, um, made it a foot from the K-rail. Um, unfortunately, the airbags had depleted, depleted, <laughs> had gone off, um, and filled our car with, like, this powdery, smelly smoke. And, yeah, we were both freaking out. We dove out of the car as quick as we could. I wasn't wearing shoes because I had taken them off. Was complaining about my foot pain just prior. So, yeah, no. My seatbelt had actually left a bruise um, on my chest immediately. I don't know how. My knee actually slammed into the console panel in the, in, in the middle of the car. So, my knee was extremely messed up in pain. Um, but we jumped out of the car, she couldn't get out of her side, the door finally opened on mine, and we were able to climb out my side, now both of our phones were on the charger in the center of the console, and we couldn't get to them, because we were just so scared we needed to get out of the car, we were not sure, it smelled like something was burning, so we weren't sure if the engine was going to catch fire, or what was going to happen, but we dove out as quick as we could, um, and got on the other side of the K-Row, we were scared as all get out. Luckily, she was able to put on her um, her blinkers just before we dove out. And, um, yeah, it was very scary. There was a van that pulled up behind us. Did they help us? No. They pulled up almost hitting the car and looked at us and ignored us as we are screaming and wailing and waving, going, help us, help us, help us, please don't leave us. She looked right at both of us and kept going. She went around our car and kept going. A, maybe two minutes later, um, another car, a Jeep, was coming on the freeway and going too fast, um, did not see us until the last second. He started slowing down, but he still hit our car again. And it threw the car forward another two car lengths. Um, so, yeah. Back of it had um, quite a bit of damage. The Jeep actually, his bumper 
went under his car so he was stalled out we were screaming and yelling please don't leave us please don't leave us, leave us. call 911 it was a dad and his daughter she was probably like 18 um that was when I first knew I had anxiety attacks or panic attacks I was massively starting to have an anxiety attack I was so scared I was so freaked out I was in pain in random spots I couldn't breathe my chest was hurting everything hurt um it was almost like I thought I was going to go into shock at some point because I was so freaking scared um we the the two people got out of the car he said okay okay we're calling um we were like get over here get over here um so they got over the k-rail and luckily like another couple minutes later um the we had saw cop was actually moving that dodo bird car um away from the carpool lane and over to where we were um, unfortunately, we had good cop, bad cop syndrome. They took his statement. He completely blamed us, said that we were going too fast, um, and that we hit him, um, and that, you know, his car just died and it wouldn't move, um, and that we weren't obviously paying attention to his flashers, which, no, there was no flashers. Um, so the cops basically listened to him. They talked to the dude who was the Jeep driver. He didn't know the whole situation. He just knew what he did. The officers came over to us. The one already came with a predetermined mindset that it was our fault. And that is how basically he wrote it. The good cop did ask if we were all okay, which we were, um, minus, you know, pain and stuff like that, that we were all kind of suffering. Um, my aftermath actually wound up being, um, I now suffer migraines, um, because the first spring, because this happened in August, um, of 16, or 15, excuse me, it happened in August of 15, and the spring of 16, um, I wound up getting migraines. Um, I also have extreme PTSD when a lot of these cars are spinning, um, I get very bad anxiety, um, I do get kind of scared, um, it's really weird feeling, um, because literally all I can remember from the accident was hearing our tires screeching across the road, um, also hearing the giant bang from when we made contact with the other car. So for me it's extreme PTSD, um, I now actually suffer from um, massive anxiety, um, especially when I hear spinners, when I hear car accidents, stuff like that. Um, I do suffer extreme anxiety. I did wind up getting a um, pinched nerve that wound up happening, um, showing up, like flaring up, I should say. It wound up flaring up um, a couple months after our accident that I didn't know that was there, but it did wind up flaring up and causing problems. Okay, where now I have sciatica. Um, my asthma was never as prominent, I guess, is the best word. I don't know. Um, as it is now. And I've always had asthma since I was a kid. Um, but now it's a lot more prominent than it used to be. Um, but anyways, <laughs> unfortunately that long ramble. <sighs> that's it though. <laughs> so yeah, um, I am going to be making a pumpkin patch um, video showing you guys um, what we see at the pumpkin patch today so I am so excited to go to the pumpkin patch and get a pumpkin today um, also um, I will be it's basically going to be like bonus videos for probably the first of November um, as part of my what I got to do on Halloween um, and then I will be trying to show the morning of Halloween um, what we wind up doing this weekend. <laughs>